Yo. Wait, can you hear that? Okay, there you go. Sorry about that. Hey, what's up? Yeah. Welcome what everybody up? to episode three with the man, legend, Richard Bloomer. Richard is the owner of Strata House Films and also a freelance videographer for CrossFit HQ. Richard, how's it going, man? What's up, dude? Super pumped to be on this. It's going to be an awesome time. Same. Sorry about I don't know the, if I'm a beginning. legend, though. Oh, yeah. I you don't are. know if I'm a legend. I don't, I don't know what that means, you know? Well, um, I'll tell you later. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Richard, tell me about you. I mean, I met you at the beginning of the year in person, but um, I've heard of you for quite a while, and I've, I've followed your stuff for a little bit. Um, so I'm super stoked to have you here because actually I want to have a lot of questions for you. I want to know more about everything you do. I think it's pretty cool. So, um, just tell, tell us about you, like where you grew up, how's your childhood, all that. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, I am originally from Texas. I'm here in Atlanta, Georgia right now. Um, but born and raised in Abilene, Texas, very small town. That's where I, that's where I grew up. And, uh, yeah, I guess uh, if you want me to, I'll get into a little bit of like a small origin story. Does that sound nice? Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, getting into where I am now, meeting Carlos and, you know, us getting to hang out at the beginning of the year at the Fittest Experience um, and doing stuff with the CrossFit and all that kind of stuff, being having a video production company. Um, you know, I, I grew up and never had like an artistic, was an artistic kid. Um, maybe I thought that, but, uh, it was never something that, um, was a thing that I thought I, sh I should do, or it could be a route that I could have a career down and, and enjoy and love. And so, um, yeah, never was, uh, into filmmaking, never was in the video. Um, uh, my dad and I were always in the gadgets and we always had like, uh, these drones and stuff at the very beginning. Um, when like drones first came out before DJI was a big thing, my dad was, had these drones and we would fly around. So that maybe that was my, my uh, beginning of filmmaking world. To, yeah. Uh, but, uh, I went to school at Texas Tech University and I actually went to school, something totally unrelated. Um, I was in the fields, uh, chipping away at big cross sections and was getting my degree in geology. And so I got my degree in geology, uh, went to school and like, that was my dream to be a geologist. Um, I love the outdoors. I love the creativity of, of the, out, of just the outdoors and how things were made. Um, and from that, I just, I decided one day I, I was, we did these big long field reports, uh, for our classes and I picked up a camera. Uh, my dad would take photos of me when I was playing sports. And so he had one and uh, took photos of rocks for my field reports. And that was the beginning of everything is taking photos of rocks. <laughs> That's and, awesome. uh, you know, during that, around that time, I started working out at a CrossFit gym, fell in love with the CrossFit gym and thought that it would be cool to take photos for the gym community there for their social media for their instagram and that's kind of where it all started it all kind of birthed into uh geology then to uh taking photos for the for my first gym and now it's a couple of years down work for some video production companies um and i guess about a year and a half coming up in two years started out my own um video production company strat house films and so that's that's kind of where everything started in a very fast way that's awesome uh we actually have a lot of things in um in common i didn't really have a creative you know growing up i wasn't the most creative or i i guess i i always had that mind of um i'd like to learn like new stuff and all that but i wasn't into photography or videography until i mean similar stuff until in my crossfit gym i started taking photos and all that for social media but yeah same i went to business school I had nothing to do with with anything at least you went to like and got went to school and did something that was actually useful like you probably learned something you know that's uh, useful for your life and business sure yeah <laughs> i learned a lot <laughs> anyways but yeah uh growing up i guess i liked uh drawing a little bit i i like to make i remember in 
in middle school and um, high school making some videos on iMovie, but something, you know, super simple with like my GoPro and something I really liked, but never got into it um, until, yeah, the gym, I started doing CrossFit and, and I wanted to take pictures of people doing CrossFit. I guess Instagram also inspired me to do that, you know, <laughs> just seeing all the awesome pictures. So yeah, pretty, pretty similar stuff than you. We have Kike Villaseñor. He asks, hola amigo, Richard, what was the hardest thing to learn? And how do you learn it? Hardest thing to hardest learn thing, <laughs> hardest thing to learn about my job now, and and how did I learn it? That's a tough question to start the podcast. No, with. I could get really deep if you <laughs> wanted me to. Let's leave that I question for. Um, let's leave a question for like whenever we're talking about some things about like learning, learning experience, and all that. So uh, I was checking your your Instagram work. Um, I don't know if you, you were doing stuff before that, but I, I saw that you were doing a lot of like traveling stuff, a lot of like travel cinematography, like with the drone. I saw some stuff in Iceland too. Is that how you got started with, with your like career? No. So, uh, well, I after guess obviously like, the CrossFit, I'm talking yeah, about more video, more video. So really, um, man, it's like such a like long journey of figuring out that like I wanted to do video. And, um, I think I love photography. I think it's a great thing. I consider it more of a hobby now than I do like a job. Um, I, I typically never like get hired to take photos, um, just because I could, but I, I prefer to just focus on the video side. That's what I love the most. But, um, you know, taking photos, there came a point where I was like, uh, I kind of dabbled in video because I had a, I had a drone. Um, I had the first DJI Mavic Pro and that was my first like 4k camera. Uh, I would have that, that drone and I would hold it up as like an actual using it as a camera and I would hold my phone here and I would record myself while I was, I would, where I would record it while I was like, running around the crossfit gym like it was a gimbal <laughs> and uh that's how i got in the video and i, I just kind of got into editing and i loved all the technical things about it um that you had to have good lighting that you had to have audio that you had all these other technical things and that's kind of how i got into the video side and just fell kind of more in love of how there is one photo you can take with your your camera that can tell a story for sure but getting to be able to tell a story from for, you know, 30 seconds to, you know, however long you want it to be was really cool. Uh, the music, everything about video just is what I, I loved. And so that's kind of how I just decided that that's what I'm going to do and do video. Yeah, I agree. I kind of um, feel the same way. That's one of the reasons why I tried to do both. I love photography because as you said, with one shot, you can, you can create something that people like feel. So it's pretty cool. You're pretty much freezing the freezing time and people can see that. But the video part of, um, of, you, you know, like creation is just really awesome. Just being able to create something from scratch, using the music transitions, all that, and just creating a story behind. So, um, talking about strata films, you said that it's, that's pretty recent. It's a recent. Yeah. Recent yeah. Season. First, let me, let me fix a little, my background, you know, it, it could be better and it's, it's not, it's not better. So give me a second. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's see. We have. Come on, Anthony. Oh, there we go. All I know is oh, Richard like Bloomers. <laughs> Look at Anthony. He says, we don't need, we don't need that, Anthony. All I know is that Richard Bloomer is one of the most handsome dudes in the industry. You know what? I agree. I tell him all the time. If this is the Anthony I'm thinking about, I'm, I think he's just a liar. <laughs> it's true. All <laughs> right, let's talk about Strata Films. That was the last question. Um, it's pretty yeah, recent, so you, right? uh, yeah, it's pretty recent. So um, I guess this was during the middle of 2020. Uh, August of 2020 is when I first started. I was like, you know what? Like, I'm going to do this on my own. I'm going to start my own business, my own video production company and just go with it. And at the time I was working at a fantastic place, um, in Atlanta, Georgia called inertia films. I still love those guys. I still work with them. 
Um, I'll hire their crew now to come and help me on, on different shoots and rent from them. Uh, but there was just always a part of me that wanted to own my own business and just kind of during the mixture of 2020, it wasn't because of COVID or anything or, um, but it was, it was the time it was the right time to do it. And so I just jumped and leaped forward and it's been one of the, the best decisions I've ever made. Um, and, um, main reason why I get to talk with you and why I've gotten to meet so many awesome people kind of in the industry and, um, and just get to explore and get to work with CrossFit, which is like one of my lifelong probably dreams, uh, to get the, to work with him and never thought it would be as soon as it is, but it's, um, I just been really grateful that I've gotten to. So, yeah. How was making that jump from obviously working with people having, I don't know if it was a salary or, you know, Something like that, that jump from working with, for somebody into just, I mean, it's up to you now to make money and to make a living. Tell me about that experience. Yeah. So it, uh, it wasn't a super hard jump in terms of financially having to make the jump. Um, I was working at a salary job and honestly, I was just, I wasn't getting paid a ton amount of a, like a ton from my job, uh, not that I don't do this job or I don't do what I do now because of my goal is to make a billion dollars and be rich. Like, um, that's why I did geology first is because I wanted to do something in oil and gas and be a petroleum geologist and try and make millions of dollars. Uh, but then I transitioned out of that because I realized that I wanted to do something that was really meaningful to me personally, um, and to help other people. And that's kind of why I I do the job now. So like I said, I, I was, I guess I, I realized I was working for the other company, doing a lot of editing, a lot of work, a, a lot of work for them. Um, being working as like a DP on bigger sets and um, editing a lot of their jobs. And I just kind of, I guess doing a little bit of number crunch to realize it. wait, they're doing really well off of uh, all the stuff that I'm making. I was like, Oh, what if I did this yeah. for myself? And I think at that time too, I finally felt like that I had all the tools that I needed, um, understanding of business, understanding of how to, to tell a story decently well at the time, always a work in progress and how the, how to light someone well in an interview, um, how to, to do all those things is like working with a big client. Like I got to with them, and so it was just like it was time and the jump was definitely a jump but it was one of those things where right when i did it it would automatically paid off um and it was worth it and it, it, i finally felt like for the first time that i could like fly and i could i could be myself and i, I didn't have any restrictions of what i had to do for the or what i had to do for my company I was working for is I could do everything that I wanted to. I could have the, I could bring them into a system to where, um, I, how I wanted them to feel when they first reacted with my company, all those kind of things. And, uh, it was, it was worth it. Um, it yeah. was fantastic. I can see it being a smooth transition. It's the same industry, right? So you're pretty much just realizing, okay, I can do this myself. So let me go ahead and start my company. Um, Last last episode with Eric, some people were asking or some people were telling us that they wanted to make the change or the jump from, you know, part time uh, photography or videography mm -hmm. into full time. And and we we're talking about how scary that can be, because most people are, I mean, working a nine to five. Right. So from nine to five mm -hmm. into just realizing this is not what I want to do. I want to make make that jump. Um, yeah. So. So, yeah, being from working and already in the industry, I bet that just kind of like pretty much just realizing, okay, I can do this myself and not having to. Yeah. And, and I guess like speaking on that with, uh, being worried about ch switching out of the nine to five and then going to like full time into it. Um, you know, for me, I was working Monday to Friday, maybe a Saturday doing the same stuff that I'm kind of doing now. Um, but, I would do it all week for another company. Then when I would get back home, I would just do all my own personal projects the whole time. 
and you know i'm looking for production company so the thing is is that it it wasn't super ethical business wise for me to like go and take on these clients for my own self so i was doing all these things for free um for people at my crossfit gym uh i would do i would have like a passion project that sounded fun to do so i would start doing that and maybe they would give me like something free in return for you know what business they did but i wasn't getting paid because i was it just didn't I, I didn't want to um be a conflict of interest for the company i was working for so it came to be where so many people were asking me to make videos for them i had to keep on saying no and no and no because it just wasn't right to do um to where i was like okay i can't keep saying no anymore and honestly it was one of my my first client and one of my main clients now who have grown a lot now is uh he kind of he's a uh, um one of my clients it's corrective chiropractic and they're like a, a bigger chiropractic kind of group in the southeast and have about 15 locations and are kind of growing from like colorado pennsylvania to south carolina atlanta and he we were actually the the owner the founder of that company we would work out with each other every morning at 5 30 a.m at the crossfit gym and uh, never thought of him as like oh this is a business opportunity you know um but we just became good friends and and one day i was like dude you could do so much more with video I, like i don't know why you're not doing anything you know and i came I went over to his his uh his office and i was like this is what you need to do you need to make these little origin stories for all your doctors that you have and uh make impact films of your clients that have had a good experience with you and he was just like shoot man what if i just hired you and uh i just hired you or you just come work for me as one of my employees and and do this and he's like i'll offer you this much amount of money and this this x y and z and i was like no i won't do that and i was like i don't know if i could work for you know another company again and so then i came back and i was like how about we do this i start my own company you're my first client and you pay me the x amount that you want to uh that you're going to salary wise but then pay that out monthly um and so it was like a my first client container client and that's how we started and it's been fantastic growing with him and being with him but it was uh um don't know how i got to this part but that's kind of a yeah funny so funny yeah. thing how it happened so you met your first client at the gym right at a crossfit gym i've met all my clients at the crossfit gym that's that's, that, that's that's where i was going with this um i feel like it's pretty cool that most of the people are listening you and i and you know most of the of our friends in the industry we we all do crossfit right and and we we have our own business or we do it part-time and most of the connections that we make we make them we make them at, at the gym because we have a camera and then, you know, the owner of, I don't know, uh, a restaurant looks at you. It's mm -hmm. like, Hey, can you do, do you do food photography or something? I'm like, yeah, sure. And then from there you start making connections and then word of mouth. So I think it's, a, it's pretty cool that I, I hear that story a lot that, you know, all my clients come from the CrossFit gym. Man, it's like CrossFit is like a gift from God. I'm telling you, it just, like I've never had to do marketing. I've never go out and like really hunt for clients. I just go work out at the gym, you know, have a good time with the community and um, sometimes go in there and make a video for, you know, whatever, for just a, a good time so that people can enjoy the CrossFit community more. And then just stuff kind of happened, you know? Very true. Yeah, so obviously, CrossFit is probably, I don't know, maybe 10% of what you do uh, for your business and, and all that. But how do you get involved with CrossFit HQ? Because that, that's what that's how people know you now, that you're one of the video guys for CrossFit HQ. How do you get involved yeah. into that part of the business? Yeah, so uh, back in Texas, I run and I run the media team at this competition called the bcs classic and that was like my first competition that i've really ever done any video for at all 
and became kind of good friends with that group. So I've been um, doing stuff for them for a while, but it was, I guess it was two years ago. Yeah, I guess about two two years ago, they're having a competition there. Big thing that most maybe people know about the competition is that um, CrossFit Mayhem partners with that BCS Classic. And so Rich goes out there and he works out with one of the competitors and that competitor who gets a workout with Rich Froning is they raise the most money for the Ronald McDonald house. So it's like a little charity thing that they do. Um, but one year it was 2020 during COVID. No one is at that event. Uh, this one dude, you know, tall guy kind of, you know, kind of skinny, um, you know, wearing his hat and just, he's a cool guy named Michael Dalton. He is rolling with the mayhem crew and is making a YouTube video for them. And this was like before they really had a big kind of foundation on their YouTube page. They, they didn't have their media team that they had now. I think they just hired Scott at the time, but he was like working on these other videos, but Michael Dalton, uh, he was there and I, I had no idea who Michael was or, um, I didn't, I don't really follow many creators or stock many creators on social media. I just kind of, when I meet them, I follow them. And so met him and we just kind of kicked it off and had a good time. And it was fun getting to, to hang out with him at the event, gave him some footage and kind of helped him out for his side, um, for his YouTube video that he was making. And, you know, if you know, Michael, if you've ever met him, he's just one of the most down to earth, uh, one of the greatest guys you'll meet. And honestly, one of the most giving people that you'll ever meet too, uh, to where he just wants to help other creators, other people do the same thing that we do. And, um, we just kind of, after that, kept on touching base, kept on messaging on Instagram. Uh, and he just kept on throwing my name out there to other people whenever they needed help with other things he knew that you know i enjoyed crossfit and like i love getting to do stuff with crossfit and um it was 2021 it was the first i guess age group online qualifier and one of the the head people of kind of crossfit games media team reached out um from recommendation from michael and she was just saying, Hey, uh, this is like, this was like the craziest time whenever this was happening, but she just reached out on the email. Hey, uh, Richard, um, would you be willing in the next two days to fly to Columbus, Ohio and go film Dan Bailey while he's doing the age group online qualifier <laughs> the next two and days. And you know, yeah. And in, in like the next two days. And if you know, like, Dan Bailey's like in, in the space, very well known. And so I was like, Oh my gosh, that would be fantastic. And it was just kind of like this automatic, like I'll do whatever it takes, um, to go and to Columbus, Ohio and to go and film this and, and, and do it. And that's kind of how it all started. Um, worked that first job and filmed with Dan and had a really awesome time with him. He just, uh, it was like kind of the perfect person to, to get the film for your first time. And then also just like under the counsel of um, Dalton, just him helping and wanting the best for me and wanting, uh, you know, just helping me along the way. And just from that, just kind of on and on, I, I filmed with Katrin Davis daughter at one of the semifinal online events uh, again that year. And then was invited to, to come film with them at the CrossFit Games. And so that's kind of how it all started and got to know other great people like Lily and Lindsay and the whole crew there um, with CrossFit Games. And that's how, that's, uh, that's how it started. Awesome. And how does it work? Do they usually reach out to you like randomly? Like, hey, you know, for example, right now, I know that you went to Cookville a couple of weeks ago to film Haley. Mm -hmm. How does it work? Mm -hmm. Like, do they reach out to you like three months in advance? Like, hey, you know, in three months, uh, would you be able to go to Cookville? Or it's kind of like, hey, next week, Haley's going to be in Cookville doing the court finals. So Can you fly? During that, so during that time in 2021, it was that time where I went and filled with Dan Bailey. It was kind of like an emergency situation for them because they had someone that was supposed to be filming with Dan and he was all set and he was booked and ready to go. 
and he ended up double booking and had like a wedding he had to be at and so they had to like just randomly fill this up as you know as soon as they possibly could and that's how that happened other stuff is a little bit better um this year is by far you know the best because it was before the season ever started um kind of their operation person emily um o'hearn she reached out and was like hey are you okay if you book all of these dates for the whole year um so it was Wadapalooza, um week one week two week three the open all the the qualifiers and all the semifinal events it was all the events that crossfit was doing for the whole entire year and so i you know booked those and so i knew ahead of time and i have those kind of scheduled out that i might possibly work those um and you know maybe a week or two out that's when i the communication kind of starts to where you figure out where you might be going what you might be doing who you might be filming that kind of stuff so nice so are you gonna be pretty much at every semifinal so far yes i'll be at all the semifinals um except the first week um right now i think the first week is the only one i might not be at but we'll see about that one I had I had yeah. another obligation I was going to do, but then it canceled. So then and now I have that week open, which might be good for just my own personal self to so not do four weeks back to back. But um, but we'll see. Yeah, how's handling the the schedule with your own business? Because I know me personally, it's tough <laughs> because I have to obviously like there are some bigger jobs and. And I do a lot of weddings too and all that. So sometimes it's tough for me to book something for 2023 because, I mean, CrossFit is my passion. It's what I like to do. And even though I know I make more money doing other things, I always want to be mm. in the CrossFit world when it comes to choosing for a weekend, right? Um, so it, it's hard to book for me. How about for you? Like, how do you handle that? You're having your own business and also having to book i mean pretty much every weekend and well you know i kind of see crossfit not as a something that gets in the way really of like my other jobs i mean the other jobs i i have are great and they're constant and ongoing but i see crossfit as like um in, in a way for me as like another client that I want to have a really healthy relationship with that I want something to be for a very long time. Um, so not just a short amount of time that I'm just grinding because, and I'm not getting paid. Like, no, I'm getting paid. I'm getting to do what I love at the same time, getting the, the film with them. But it's also like um, thinking now, how can I set myself up to where I am doing these jobs and working hard, but I'm also having a healthy boundary line with normal life and also other jobs that I'm doing. And uh, how can I best do that and serve all my clients at the same time? And I think a lot of that just comes from, it's helpful for me knowing that I have these weekends, these dates booked out for CrossFit and that that's what I'm going to do those jobs. And so I can look, five months ahead of time and i can know okay this weekend i probably i can't film because there's a semifinal so hey are you can we film the week before or or not and so um a lot of my other stuff is kind of like more corporate stuff so i don't they don't film on the weekends which is nice um so a lot of it is monday through friday or like tuesday wednesday thursday a lot of times and so it works out really well with kind of like my CrossFit schedule as of the time right now. Awesome. Do you have a team behind that can like cover for you? For example, if you have to fly somewhere, do you have anybody that can shoot the stuff that you need or maybe even the edits? There are definitely people. I, don't, I wouldn't say I have like this automatically. I'm going to, you know, have a team that would do, do the job if I'm not going to be there. I think... I haven't gotten to the bind yet where there's a big situation to where a client needs something and I have to be at two places at the same time. Um, but I feel pretty confident now that there are people that I could trust to like go and do the job and go and film something. Um, now I like really, honestly, I feel like this year for me is trying to find ways to scale 
and to not just be Richard Bloomer and only be himself. Um, but how can I bring other people to come and 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 help me achieve the same goals? Uh, to help edit for me, really help edit for me is the biggest thing. Um, if I can find someone that is great at that and has a like a good understanding to where I don't have to be too much into works and help manage, that would be that'd be awesome. And that's kind of like the uh, what I'm really trying to do this year is find finding the right people for this, the right jobs. All right. So if if you're listening and you're a video editor you love what Richard's doing, we're going to put his email down there. Um, so <laughs> you can reach out I to Richard. I can't promise he's, you that any taking, of this will be the CrossFit. <laughs> he's, take, he's taking applications right now. Well, it's I, I've reached out a couple of times on social media, and I do have one guy, his name's Hunter, that has been helping me do oh, some yeah. stuff, and he's he's awesome. We met we met him, Mike Hunter, P, right? at, uh, at TFX. Um, yeah, yeah, he's helped me with, with a problem here and there um and i see that you're working with uh mike p as well mike parker oh yeah yeah mike parker yeah he's been helping me on set on some corporate stuff which is you been met him at Wadapalooza awesome or or you met him before that yeah we just like bumped into each other at Wadapalooza, and he just kind of said hey what's up and we just kind of that's how we met and i was like you're in georgia nice you're shooting on an fx6 or whatever you're shooting at the time nice so like, you know the mayhem dudes that's cool and so he's yeah. just a good guy and so He's been helping out and would love to get him more involved doing doing uh more things. But people whenever I reach out and say, Hey, I need help editing, they I feel like everyone thinks, Oh, sweet, uh, cool CrossFit edits. But it's like the majority of my stuff is very corporate, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I love personally. I like I love yeah. doing the corporate stuff. Um, it's a nice um juxtaposition of like fitness crazy and then corporate kind of more chill. Um, but trying to make that corporate the corporate life very story driven um, with how I'm doing that. So, yeah. So going back to your weekend or your week at Mayhem with Haley, I've always wondered like how do you how do you pr prepare for that? Do they give you like a shot list that you have to take, or it's pretty much just they send you there and they're like, hey, you know what you're doing? We trust you. Do your thing. I think there, there's probably a mixture of both of that um, where I did have a like deliverable list. So I had like, you know, to deliver them, you know, a couple, of, they didn't really say a number of reels. It's like I give them melts, which is footage from uh, that kind of each of our workouts that usable footage that then they can use for their other stuff later on for marketing purposes broadcasts whatever so i had like that was a task um another task was possibly making a longer form like youtube video i'm actually working on that right now and i'll probably finish that this weekend and then other stuff was like making uh making little snacks is what we call them or, or reels for instagram social media just small little snippets that they could use and have fun with and and those are all just up in the air um those don't come in like we want you to get this kind of video it's more of like you go in and what i love about them and the the crossfit games crew is that they're just a they're an awesome awesome group of people first off but they really um trust and they really appreciate every single person's different eye and what they do artistically um they don't care about it having to be a certain way to feel a certain way it's how does richard feel about what would richard make in this moment um yep. of Haley? you know so i go in there and i just like think of what would be good and what would I like to see and what seems to be good to me to where if, you know, Dalton or Lily or someone else uh, went there, they would probably make something totally different, but that's okay because it's from what their creative eye would, what would want to make and um, their artistic view. So you just go in there, you make stuff and test around sometimes if you want to and do something that you maybe have never done before and just kind of roll with it. Yeah, so I didn't know you have to you have to do the edits too. Do you have yes. to? Is is that like usually how it works? Also for whenever you shoot, for example, bigger competitions as Waterpalooza, 
Do you have to do that? So, or you also send the raw. So with CrossFit, you make like sometimes I'll make some of my own edits, um, but sometimes like um, I don't make any of the edits. So it is a very team driven group of people. Um, everyone is working together to like for the goal of like making CrossFit well more like more well known um to normal people the surrounding people and so like everyone's on the same mission and same goal and so a lot of times like i'm handing off my footage to like uh lily or dalton or Lindsay, who does um digital lens she does the majority of like all the funny stuff that you'll see on like tiktok she runs a tiktok account she creates like a, a lot of the funny reels and she does other videos too and then like lily she's she does a lot of the editing right now for CrossFit games just for the year, the year long, but um, it's me giving my footage to them. And then they have certain goals and tasks that they do with that. Um, but yeah, sometimes like I'll, I'll be assigned to like make something or sometimes I just decide to make something and maybe they use it. Maybe they don't very, awesome. very uh, team kind of like um, working together to accomplish something to help showcase an event or showcase a person all right so let's talk about this question right here the the one that we didn't answer he was asking what's the hardest thing to learn and how do you learn it so let's let's split that in, in like two parts this. yeah let's split it and the hardest thing you had to learn whenever you were starting your business and also what's the hardest thing you had to learn whenever you start working for a client like CrossFit, for example. So and I'm sorry, my, if you hear my dogs barking, there's oh, that's okay. somebody outside. My dog was just yawning a while ago. Like he uh, is wants to get out of bed, but I haven't caged it. Um, starting a business, hardest thing to learn. <sighs> mm, I'm going to, you know, it's hard for me to be honest to like answer both of these separately because i feel like for me it is the same thing all right um, let's do it. and the hardest thing and this is for me personally the hardest thing for me like that i've learned i'm still learning daily um is to be myself to be totally honest to not be anyone else um that but myself whenever i have the camera whenever i'm editing whenever i'm interacting with other people i think for me it's like i found a struggle and i find a lot of self-doubt whenever i see other people's work and what they're doing and uh like that just defeats me it makes me you know judge everything that i'm making it makes me doubt everything and uh learning to just be myself and that I've been gifted that God has gifted me with a certain, um, certain eyes, a certain mindset, a certain, certain feelings, um, and to not be afraid and be shy to like, um, let those out and let the world see that. And that's like the biggest thing that I've learned. And I feel like whenever I'm my most self is whenever I make my best work and whenever I'm trying to be someone else, whenever I'm trying to be a different creator that's making the same work that I am, it's whenever I sit there on the computer trying to edit a video and I don't know what to do next and I'm, I think everything's bad and I'm struggling because I'm like trying to make something that I wouldn't make, you know? And so, and that's with owning a business, that's with, um, that's with working with CrossFit is, is that same thing. Owning a business is being yourself to, to your clients, um, not being anyone else different, not having, not acting or being trying to be a certain way, but just being, um, just being Richard. And, uh, and the same thing with CrossFit, not trying to be like all the other amazing people that I'm around. Cause there's, I mean, there's people that I'm around that are fantastic at what they do. Like, Michael Dalton has been working um, in the CrossFit space for, you know, 10 plus years and is fantastic at his job and does things that I never will be able to do ever. But that's because he's Michael Dalton. He's not trying to be anyone else. And 
uh, learning that from people like from him and other people, it's, uh, it's been a game changer for me, just like, I think personally, mentally, um, so that I don't get into this self doubt depression. <laughs> Dude, I think that's such a good answer. Um, I really hope a lot of people get to listen to that because I would have answered in a different way. I would have actually answered about like my business and all that, but, but it's true. I mean, it's really true. It's really hard to, to just, just focus on, you know, like you have certain abilities and you just have to work with that. You, you have to be, you know, grateful of, of what you, the, the way you, you do your job and just try to let all the negativity and all the things that run to your head, like, dude, am I good enough to do this? Just leave it aside and just go with what you have and do the most out of it. Just be passionate about it. So I think that's a, that's a great answer. And I also think that you, as you said, like you try to be richer, right? You try to be um, this person that's very personable with everybody. And that's one of the things I noticed whenever I work with you, you're just very authentic. You're just, you know, cool dude that goes to, to the CrossFit competition that we did and then just work hard. You, you shoot, you go back to edit, you're nice to everybody. I can tell you love what you do. So, you know, it's, it's something that I, as somebody that, just met you at that point i noticed hmm. well i guess that's i guess that's okay <laughs> I'll, I'll say though that like for people that might be just starting out like and they hear that that's a really difficult thing that you might like to answer for yourself i mean i think that that answer to be honest for you took me six years to answer um because i didn't know who i was <laughs> I didn't know what I was good at. I didn't know what I enjoyed. Um, there weren't certain tendencies that I just kept on going to when I, were film, when I was filming stuff. And it's just like each day trying to be more of yourself. And uh, that took a lot of time um, being in a work setting, but also just like being outside of work and not trying to be someone else that you're who you're not and not trying to act a certain way to be a cool kid. And, um, many times like, you know, I, I might be super chill and I might not say anything or talk at all. And it's, it, it's, I, I know that I'm okay. I can just sit here and be quiet. Um, because I don't need to, to chime in or, or, or be in this joke. Cause I can just be, you know, myself at the time. And, uh, but yeah, that took a long time to answer. And probably I didn't figure that out until, uh, three months ago at Wadapalooza. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. So Dalton DeBerry asks, what's your definition of success? Hmm. I think uh, definition of success. I think the, the I mean, there's so many ways that people answer that. Um, I think answer, the definition. Just let's let's let Richard answer that question. All right. Yes. The definition of success to me is doing what I love and not being a emotional, depressed, um, unhealthy, unfit, um, like wreck at the end of it. Um, it's being happy and just like being filled with my work. Um, but also getting to go home and be with my wife and to play with my dog and to, um, go to the CrossFit gym each day and to work out an hour a day and feel healthy and not feel like that. I'm like, so worked up with anxiety because I have a shoot back to back and back that I can't focus and I can't eat the way I want to. Cause I'm so worked up and I can't go work out that day because I'm thinking about the next shoot that I have to do. I would rather, um, have less work and, get to do all those things that I, I talked about, be at the gym, hang out with my wife, hang out with friends, then have a job every single day or every single week. Um, and so I think success to me is that, and that's really hard because I'm like, feel like that I've been teetering on the edge of that, um, of having that balance. And it's been, a good learning experience of like learning when to say no um 
capping myself of like, okay, I know that I'm going to have two weeks of back-to-back shoots that are really big for me. I probably shouldn't do a shoot for the next week or two weeks. Um, it would be good for me to just be home, to recharge, to, to be with the, uh, at the gym and get the workout with the community there. So I think that's success. Um, and I think too, within my own work, is success in within my own work is always being my authentic self um always being like i've already said always being myself and never being never leaving like i hope that i i don't leave this earth and i have a doubt or have something that i'm like man i wish that i would have just said yes to that i wish that i would have just done that thing or made that film or took that shot that i missed um it's leaving without having any regrets and i think in my work now that's how i feel it's like i don't want to not do something and have a regret that i didn't do it because i was afraid or i was uncomfortable or it's like being uncomfortable is like the only reason why i am anywhere that i am now because um because i pushed into those moments you know true one of the things that I struggle the most with my business is that feeling of like anxiety and like stress whenever there's a lot of things piling up, whenever you don't say no, when you you should have, just because you're like, okay, I'm going to do it. And then, you know, things start piling up. You have edits, you have deadlines. How do you, how do you deal with that stress? Because I'm sure you as a business owner that goes, that goes, you go through that yeah uh i would say i'm a pretty anxious person uh probably in many ways struggle with anxiety um or i do struggle with anxiety and it's something that like i feel like uh i've really had to work on myself here recently um for me like what's been beneficial is like i have an awesome wife and if i feel like i'm just getting really worked up and super anxious like I just tell her everything. Hey, I'm feeling this way, X, Y, and Z. Some of that anxiety is totally um, from my own self of coming back and thinking of like, I'm not going to be good enough to do this job. I'm not going to be good enough to to work with this client because I need to be like this person a lot of times. And so um, like telling her everything and she's just super helpful and encourages me and loves me in that and just kind of tells me it's going to be okay and you're going to be fine and just do your thing and you'll be good and then uh, also too like it's been helpful to like go and actually see a counselor um and talk about those things with someone else and actually get help um but those are like two things that i have helped me and and then also it's like um my faith is really important to me and like t- there's nothing like um listening to worship music or sitting down and, and opening up my bible and, and reading god's word or being in prayer um in those moments where i'm like really struggling and that that's what has helped me personally is um is my faith during that kind of stuff and so like um all that kind of a combination it's not just one thing that overweighs again it's a balance of all those that then creates like um a more healthy uh way of not freaking out too much but i know even when i do those things i'm still a kind of a bundle of anxiety sometimes (laughs) yeah it's tough because you know everything everything's on you whenever you have clients expecting something so at the end of the day, if something goes wrong. It's it's you. You are the the reason why it went wrong, right? You don't have a team, or it's not like a. It, it's just tough. It's I I deal with yeah. that too, with a lot of anxiety and stress whenever I have you know edits, I have clients yeah. expecting stuff, and and also like that self doubt, like that you were mentioning earlier, like what if the client doesn't yeah. like it or he's not happy with it. And I think from just like a more basic like how to deal with that and how to make sure that that anxiety and stress and the work building up um doesn't actually build up and turn over is first off like 
being a good communicator with your clients, being a good communicator with the people around you and being authentic to them, um, not being because you might be their lead on the job. Um, it's okay to be like, hey guys, um, I'm a little worked up and kind of anxious about this. Like, I'm sorry if, um, if I'm being weird, you know, I'm sorry if I'm a little quiet, like I'm not trying to be. And just being open to all your crew members, all your people, and not like trying to feel like you have it all together all the time. Um, that's why we, like our world that we live in, it's not supposed to be the sole content creator. Um, this job and the things that we do, it's a teamwork thing. And like people are there to help you and support you. And so that one's helpful. But also too, like one that really uh, calms my nerves is being the most prepared for every like for every little job any little moment um not being underprepared for anything at all um if you see my little pelican case over here i have a backup of a backup of every single thing that you could ever think of i have an nd filter for my nd filter i have another backup nd filter because what if that one breaks you know, I have a backup camera or a different lens or a screw for that or um, three different uh, lobs. If I one breaks down and I'm on and I have a huge interview that I need to do and I don't have another backup. Well, I might be screwed and not have a job anymore if I don't have another backup. So that always calms my nerves whenever I know that, like, I'm prepared 100 percent. There's nothing that I can do to defeat myself in the moment because I know that I've prepared for the occasion. So I just got to walk in and I got to do what um, I know that I can do and just be good with it. And whenever the, the other things like kind of roll in and the craziness kind of happens, sometimes you just kind of laugh and you're just like, all right, let's do it, you know, and just yeah. have fun. That's awesome, dude. I love that. So our good friend, Charles McCoy, he actually worked, oh, uh, Charles. He worked with yeah, us. Look whenever, at that photo. Whenever. He looks so good. I know. I love I Charles. <laughs> So Charles is asking, is there is there anything you wish you would have done differently starting out learning photo video, photo video work or taking jobs, taking on jobs? Hmm. There's, I mean, I don't right now. There's nothing that I think I would have done differently. I would have made the same mistakes and done the same things. Um, just because it's gotten me to where I am now, I don't think that there's been a job that or something that I regret that I wish I would have done. Um, because I probably said yes to that bad job <laughs> and learned the mistakes of, oh, maybe I shouldn't do that. Um, and you learn from it. But if I had mis anything like mistakes, uh, maybe it would be taking um, more of a risk at the content that I created or that content that I create. Like, you go on Instagram now and you view all the videos are kind of the same, you know, um, I personally am, I have kind of gotten, I get kind of tired of the hype highlight video. Um, and so that's when I kind of start like thinking of, Oh, what can I make that just is kind of weird that maybe is I've never done before. And I think early on digging into that more, um, would have been better possibly just because I'm, I wasn't trying to just be someone who I'm not, but that's a part of the journey of now learning that. Um, and it took me six plus years to kind of get to that part. So that's hard to say. It's hard to say. Yeah, no, you're right. And I feel like anything that you, you can see as a mistake or like, Oh dude, I should have done this different. At the end of the day, it, it teaches you something. I mean, I'm not going to say that's why you have a backup backup, but Maybe who knows whenever you were starting, maybe you were taking some pictures at your gym and then your battery died and then you didn't have a, a battery. And luckily at that moment, you were just taking pictures for fun at your gym. Mm -hmm. But that that mistake just teaches you like, but you, you know, learned you from learned a non paid yeah. job, <laughs> even even if it's like something you're not conscious about it next time, you're going to be like, oh, I remember, you know, when I was starting out my battery died so now i'm gonna have six batteries like i know that's no oh like, yeah absolutely there's no way it's gonna happen so I, that's how i feel everybody makes the, those mistakes at the beginning and and even though if if you don't see it if you see it as a huge mistake at the end of the day it's just gonna be a learning experience it's gonna make you yeah and it's like 
better. <laughs> and so many people talk about this now. It's like all your mistakes, you need to learn from it. Um, well, it, it's true, you know, and like, I think one thing is that like, whenever you make mistakes to just be like, it's, it's okay, you know? Yep. And I'm like really thankful. I actually sometimes get really happy whenever I quote something too high, maybe, or if I lose a job or if I don't get the job that I'm really wanting to get, or, um, I screw up something really bad. I like, sometimes I'm very like pretty happy and excited about it because like, you know what, like that was supposed to happen. It was supposed to be this way and I learned from it and now I can like, I'm going to be okay. And, uh, the next step, I just won't do that. Or I learned kind of, you know, that person I wasn't supposed to work with. So it's, I shouldn't get worked up about it. So that, that, that happens to me often, or it used to happen to me often that I will get really sad with, if something didn't work out, like a job that I really wanted, like something happened and I didn't end up getting it. And I thought it was, you know, Oh dude, that this opportunity would have been awesome. And you know, I was sad. And then next thing, you know, that same weekend that you would have had that job, you get another opportunity. And then from there, that opportunity is just a much better one or something that's going to give you more opportunities in the future. So when it happens to me, when I lose a client and one of my, you know, my business and all that, like it happened because it had to happen, you know, like let's, let's mm -hmm. focus on what's next, what I can do to, to improve on those mistakes that I made or something like that. And, or let's just see what's the next opportunity and just dive in on that opportunity and get the most out of it. Yeah. Like one time I had, uh, I had a very small brief five wedding videos that I made and <laughs> this is actually my first wedding video I made. Um, he's from one of my geology buddies and he was getting married uh, or he got married. And so they asked for me to film their wedding. Thankfully, you know, I did it for free. It wasn't, it, I've never made a wedding video before. So I was like, sure, I'll do it. And went there. I was like, actually, this was like my first kind of hoorah. Like I'm doing this. I'm going to make it good. Filmed it. Great time. Made him a one little like a one minute little sizzle like the week after. So they had like something that they could watch. Um, and then uh, edited their whole entire uh, film. Like it was like just a three minute highlight film basically with music and nice B-roll shots. And uh, I'm sitting there, I'm about to press enter to, to export the video, the final video, cause it's done. I was going to export the video, had my computer, had my external hard drive hooked up to it. Get up boom extra on a hard drive falls down on the ground from about one about probably about a foot and a half off the ground plug in extra on a hard drive wasn't wasn't working extra on a hard drive was not working um it wasn't booting up it was just having this like ticking noise and i was mm -hmm. like oh no i sent it out to be recovered i got everything back from the external hard drive except that wedding video <laughs> all the footage <laughs> so i lost everything and uh they didn't get a film and i finished the film but they didn't get it and so yeah. that was just kind of like a a bad mistake of well you probably should have like made a backup x y and z um and maybe I bet now you do all think that. of an alter, 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 alternate way of maybe not doing external hard drives. Maybe don't buy those Seagate hard drives either. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so that was a, a really bad experience, but I'll, a kind of funny one. Um, they were totally okay. I'm glad that they got something from it. Um, yeah. But still, sure. it was like a you can't do that. So, yep. So I want to know more about Strata House. What's what's the mm -hmm. focus on on your business? Yeah, so Strata House is a video production company um, that it just focuses mainly on community driven brands that really want to um, help like impact and um, and make an impact on people and and help you know them grow their company as well. And so the goal is really um those groups of people and 
it's hard to say like, oh, I, like I'm in the niche of fitness. I'm in the niche of this kind of corporate setting. Um, really, it's more of I enjoy getting to work with a group of people that um, love what they do. They're super passionate about it, um, but and they're just a hundred percent, and they're really good people. But they also they want to help and inspire people, and that could be from a chiropractor, that could be from a CrossFit gym, that could be from a big, huge corporate company that all they do is focus on culture and. Um, changing the culture and the foundation of, of other companies um, from within their cultures, you know, and those all three of those things kind of come together. And um, we, you know, really try and focus, you know, I hate, I'm trying to find a better way right now. Of like we tell stories um, that really help <laughs> people because everyone now is like saying story and stuff. So uh I'm like trying to find a, a better way to say it, but just making things um, in films that are very story driven and aren't just your, your marketing films or it's more of your kind of, it probably is more of a little more like a documentary style film um, and driven by emotion and driven by good impact. So that's kind of, I'm trying to, uh, uh, do a better job of doing my pitch on that so that's fine yeah i feel like it's always nerve-wracking whenever somebody's asking you about your business you're trying to to express all the things that you can do but yeah it's definitely tough yeah i'm not like um i don't want to say like i i don't do wedding films i don't do um I'm not like a big like commercial films. Like my goal isn't to make commercial films. My goal isn't to be like a feature film, like director or whatever. Um, it's to work with businesses that love what they do, actually care about their jobs. And ultimately like their goal at the end of the day is to like really help people's lives improve. Um, and for people to be better people, just like CrossFit um, CrossFit is trying to make your normal people like live to their fullest potential of humans and not have any external or internal things that are like um, making that not possible, whether that's your fitness level, um, your health, or whether that's your culture of your company that you're working at is so bad that you can't go home every, every day you go home and you hate your life. Um, and getting to work for a company that is trying to change that is like really cool. And I, I love getting to do that. So, all right, we're going to take on one more question. This was by Jordan, Jordan Levin. So biggest Ooh, advice, to, Jordan, another Jordan, person worked back. with us, another person worked with us at TFX, TFX representing. All right. So, uh, biggest advice for someone trying to get more involved in the media space within the CrossFit world. Mm. well i will say it's extremely beneficial and helpful for me that i'm five minutes away from training think tank and i get to hang out with travis mayer all the time because <laughs> he's the owner of the crossfit gym that i go to and so uh for me getting more involved in the crossfit space it was i can't lie that it was like super helpful to be around high caliber game athletes and um, high caliber coaches like every day. And when I first started out, like I make videos for our CrossFit gym now and I'll make videos for Travis as well. Um, but just getting to, to work with like be and work with a games athlete on a daily basis and make content for him on his social media. Um, it's helpful for me cause I like get eyes on it. It's not like we, I charge him all this money and stuff. Um, but uh, that was helpful, but it's also helpful for other people that might be looking to hire you because they can see that, Oh, Richard's worked with Travis. So um, he can work with a, someone that's a games caliber athlete and have a conversation and be cool and not, uh, not be super awkward and weird. Um, but I think I think that's helpful and I think it's also helpful too to just no matter what like going to 
any CrossFit event or whatever it is and just like be kind to every single person that's there. Um, you know, have a good time. Like don't be uh, the cool kid and feel like that you know more than everyone else and that you're the best and that everyone else sucks because you work for this client or you forget the film for this person. Um, like just being there to like help people um, and help that person that's shooting for that other person succeed, just like you're trying to shoot for this other person as well. And I think that goes a long way in itself too, is just like help your other people in your space for them to do a better job. And a great example of that is I keep on, it's like I have a crush on Michael Dalton, man. Do I have a crush on you? But uh, he's he's a good example of that because he is always making sure, he, even if you're not working for him directly, that, that you're okay and that if he can help in any way that he like he can. And so uh, I think those are those are really helpful things that I I believe in. Um, so yeah, it, I mean I feel like I could bring up a lot and talk a lot about you know, stuff like this, but a, there's a lot of content creators in our space that post the same photos and do the same thing and post the same shot of that person when winning this thing. But like, I think all that stuff is cool. And like, how can you be different in that? How can you challenge yourself to get outside of your box and do something that no one else is doing? Do something weird, make a weird video, take a weird photo. Some of the best like photographers I know uh, in the space, they don't take any of the normal basic shots. They're, they just like are like they're themselves and they find themselves in these weird positions or see these weird abstract ways of the sport. And they take photos from that and they, that's, that's what they do. So, um, from my, from my experience, that's helped me a lot. All those things. Yep. I love it. Dude. I agree with you. Um, some of my favorite photographers in the in the industry is just people that do different things. Something that whenever you see it's new, it's you haven't seen that the the way they compose or like the things that they do, what they use as foreground, all that. I I love that. So my favorite. I, I mean, I agree with all that. Um, Richard, we've been on for one hour seven minutes, dude. I love. Oh, we could go. You we do. could go longer. I could ask you all your questions. I can ask you. <laughs> We can do maybe it's that episode. Me, another, you ask me questions. Time. I just, I just yeah. want to talk to you the whole time. So I keep saying the reason why I'm cutting it at one hour, it's because I want to have you guys back eventually. So we, you Ooh. know, if we, if we talk for two hours, then we won't have anything else to talk about next time. So Ooh. that's the main reason. So, dude, honestly, um, I love everything you do. I tell you all the time, I'm a big fan of, of the way you do things. Um, as you said, I think you're your stuff is different and you you definitely stand out um and dude i'm honestly super grateful that you made it to the to the show so i appreciate that and last question from me to you what's next for richard bloomer uh what's next for richard bloomer mm, that's a hard question dude uh that's why I, I waited. I went until what's the end. next is that I'm going to drink some coffee and no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> like what's the next thing that I'm doing like event wise or, or what's the next thing that's like the big plan that I have. What's the big plan you have for the future? Let's talk about, yeah, let's talk about that. Let's talk about your, <sighs> what's next for Richard in the future. Where do you see yourself? Where I see myself is hopefully having people that I'm surrounded by that um, do the same thing that I do, that love what they do, but we're all, um, like, I would love to have a team of people. I would love to have a group of people that um, we could be together and and create stuff um, and have a good time and have fun. And uh, I don't know that's how it's going to work yet, haven't find like the perfect fits for that and uh, maybe that's in a virtual world because everything is going to be virtual um but i It'll think the, the goals metaverse. are just the goals are like make really meaningful stuff make really meaningful films that will actually make an impact um on the people around us 
And whether that's in CrossFit for them to like make a healthier choice to be a healthier version of themselves, um, that's something that motivates them to be to get up in the morning and, and to eat healthier and to go to the gym and to be around great people and be around a community to change them or whether that's uh you know another film that does the same thing but in a different way um the goal is to get to be around people and do that with them to where we're all just loving it there's no um big heads involved there's not it's not a competition but it's just like a very supportive group of people that only want the best for each other love it dude thank you so much everybody that's tuning in thank you so much for listening to us if you want to find richard his instagram's right there on the screen if you're listening on spotify it's at richard underscore bloomer um richard anything else you want to add to anybody listening uh i just want to say thank you carlos this has been awesome it's been a really fun time um appreciate it, buddy. thanks for anyone that listened appreciate you guys um and keep on listening to carlos's stuff because he's a, a great <laughs> dude um but yeah just thanks for having me on i had a, i've had a really fun time i could awesome, talk dude. a lot longer and yeah, hope to hope to excited have to see back. you hopefully in like a couple of weeks or something maybe maybe like yeah. couple, like next month i might get to see you it'd be cool i think i'll be at the first first weekend of semifinals all Ooh. right everybody dang make why sure am i missing follow, <laughs> make sure you follow also our instagram account at content lab podcast if you are listening on spotify this episode was recorded live on YouTube. So you can also go back to YouTube and check the whole thing. Like people were asking questions and stuff. So thanks everybody for tuning in. Yeah, this is a Richard. cool YouTube live you got going on. I mean, this is actually is like really nice. <laughs> Most people, yeah. when they start, it doesn't look good. This looks fantastic. So, well, I'm glad, I'm job, glad you like it. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks everybody. Episode four is going to be probably on Sunday with. I'm not going to say it, but I'll say it. I'll say it Sunday morning. It'll be somebody pretty cool. All right. Richard, thank you so much, brother. I appreciate it. Peace, people. Peace out. Thanks, everybody.